Welcome back to the Mark Jackson Show on the Come and Talk to Me Network. Special shout out once again to my guys, Cam and Mace, the two legends. Why? Because they deserve it. They believed in us. I'm with my co-host, my incredible co-host, Blue. What's up, bro? What's going on? All is well. You forgot somebody. Who? Underdog Fantasy. Make sure you click the link in the description below right now. Use the promo code MARK, that's M-A-R-K, and they are matching $100. Go touch it right now. You can put money on whoever you want. It's free. Anyways. Man, this dude is That cut you off guard? You no, like you that, have, right? That was, I felt You like that, that right? I know. Yeah, I, know. I felt that. I'm back. I'm back and I'm better. <laughs> it was a long week. I'm feeling good. That's awesome. Outstanding work. I'm jealous. I'd have to look down and read. I, you know, I don't have that acting ability. No? No. You know, I've been practicing. I got it for you. Got an acting ability, Dad. Yeah, you, you, right. you, you you nice. You right. right. Go ahead. <laughs> Can we get into some uh, questions? Why not? Who wants to know some things? There's you a lot do? going on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of things going on in the NBA. All right. First off, I don't appreciate how everybody <laughs> glossed over LeBron getting forty thousand points. This dude, nobody else has ever done that. Can we give him his flowers for a minute? How amazing that is. I think people was being a uh, little understanding because he doesn't like all the attention. He what you like, mean? No, he said he doesn't like, he feels uncomfortable when you give him too much attention. So. No, 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 no. Get out of here, man. <laughs> That's what he said. This, it's man, this man did something that's never been done before. 40,000 points. It is absolutely incredible. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to clap it up for Bron. I am too. Bron. Yeah, yeah. Give it up for Bron, no, man. There's no hate in me. Think about it. 40,000 and he has a, he has a career triple-double. 40,000 points. Over 10,000 assists, over 10,000 rebounds. He has absolutely put on a clinic as far as a basketball career is concerned and what he's been able to accomplish. And it doesn't seem like it's close to the end. It's, it's unbelievable what he's doing. Goat. Goat. Huh? Goat. Come on, man. Goat T. Billy Goat. What other types of goat is there? Let me, let me give you two, goat. Let me give you two, two words. Huh? M. J. Those are letters, not words. No, they're words. No, they're no, not, no, they're, they're technically those are, are letters. No, you listen to them as letters. M, M is a word. Uh huh. J is a word. All right, all right. So you're <laughs> no, pretty good. No, but Michael Jordan. We and this is this is not to you know wave a hand at what Mike, what LeBron James has been able to accomplish. There's no disrespect at all. Let, let's let them celebrate. Michael Jordan's the goat in my book, in my opinion. LeBron James is in the discussion, and congratulations on an incredible feat yes. and uh, continue to climb the charts and make history. Think about it. Every basket he score, scores is, is historic from this point moving forward. Every basket, you've never seen it before. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough, man. Unbelievable. The greatest. Go ahead. <laughs> so in, in other news, I'm sorry, we got to still talk about Bron. Now his son, Bronny, playing at USC, has been some things in the news. They're talking about he's not on the draft. Draft board, he's uh, falling down. What's your thoughts about how, how Bron responded, how he handled that situation, and even, even just Bronny? Well, Bron is upset because of the attention that people are giving to Bronny. Uh, he climbs on the draft board. Lately, he's off the draft board. To me, too much is given, much is required. <clears throat> I wouldn't even pay attention to it. The same way that LeBron made a statement a, a month or so ago that Bronny James is better than some of you know, Laker players or some guys in the league. We have all been in this position when you reach a certain point where there's certain guys at the front of the club or the front of the restaurant controlling the VIP area, controlling the taped off area. And sometimes they see a LeBron James or somebody with a name and say, come on in, you skip the line. But there's always that one person at times that that's the only power that they will ever have. And they want to say, no, we're booked. We can't, we don't have a table for you. There's no more room, and they utilize the minimum power that they have to wave away guys because they're natural haters. So you're going to experience that if, you, if, you're, if you're Bronny James. There's going to be people that's going to celebrate you, acknowledge you, and then there's going to be people that's going to hate. And then there's going to be people that tell the truth. It's a gift and a curse to be the son of LeBron James. I say this. If I'm LeBron James, I don't even mention it. This is why. My son was almost dead. Thank God that he's still alive, that he's back on the basketball court, and he's fulfilling a dream. And on top of that, he's going to be an NBA player. I'm listening to the radio today on my way here, and they're saying, well, Bronny James needs to get better and stay in school. Why? 
the best position for him to get better is to be on one of these NBA teams and work out every single day and get better. And on top of this, they say, is he a pro? Does it matter? Yeah, he's a pro. I guarantee you, Bronny James is a pro. Why? Because I'm the Brooklyn Nets or I'm the Golden State Warriors and I got the 32nd pick in the draft. I'm picking Bronny James. LeBron James is on record already telling you he wants to play with his son. He's a free agent at the end of the year, potentially. I'm going to force his hand by drafting Bronny James, and now I win by getting LeBron James in uniform. Bronny James doesn't have to play for me. He could be at the end of the bench, working out every day, getting better. He's an elite defender today. He's a guy that's going to become a better shooter. He's a very good athlete. At the end of the day, I get LeBron James. It's incredibly good for business. It's a wise business decision. I don't know if you feel the same way, but it makes absolute sense. If I want to get LeBron James in uniform, this is the best avenue. I agree. I want to take a different angle because I don't appreciate the coverage of, of Bronny. This dude is accomplished as a basketball player. He's made it to USC. Let a, let a, a kid be a kid. Let a, let a dude grow up. Let him find his way. Give him an opportunity to become his own man. I, I have experienced growing up being your son, respectfully so, LeBron is at another level of You don't have to say fame. respectfully. I'm not insulted. You're right. No, yeah, so, so I can't even imagine that level of expectation that's on him. So when I see people sit up on media and say, um, this dude is this, or, or you, shouldn't, you shouldn't pour into to Bronny, or we jumped the gun on him, LeBron James is Bronny's father. So for him to come out and say LeBron could play in the league, at the end of the day, that's his son. And he has every right as a father to, to speak life into his son, whether he believed it at the time or not. Maybe in his mind, he said, you know what? My son needs to hear his father believes in him. So I'm going to say this in front of the world as, as LeBron James. I'm going to stand up for my son and I'm going to let him know I got his back. And even when they, when they went at him, he stood up and had his back. So I just think that you have to give space for, for a young man to be a young man and the greatest thing that LeBron has done is not 40,000 points. It's not championships. It's not a bucket, an assist. It's his family. That's the greatest thing LeBron has ever done. And so we get so caught up in watching Bronny and putting an expectation on him to be LeBron. But he doesn't have to be LeBron. There's bigger things in life, and you can be a success without having to be a 10-time champion uh, a United States representative for the for the all for the Olympics. There's there's many routes that you can go, and I know I'm 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 long winded right now, but this just hit home for me when I see a young man being put in the spotlight when he's just trying to play ball. I agree with you one thousand percent, but I disagree. In 2024, let a kid be a kid. That's not where we are. They're gonna wow. they're gonna cover him. They're gonna make statements. They're gonna put pressure on him. We didn't let a kid be a kid when that 18-year-old from, from Akron, Ohio, jumped onto the spot, spotlight. We put pressure on him like never seen before, and he responded. It's a different day and time when you talk about social media and media coverage on how we handle these kids and how we conduct uh, handling these kids. Deion Sanders, sons, he's not just the quarterback of Colorado. He's not just the, the cornerback of Colorado. There's a special light on them, and special press, pressure comes with it, and they've responded. And to Bronny's credit, he has responded. I think you embrace it. And at the end of the day, he's making a bu bunch of money in the NIL. He's extremely successful. As a parent, as a fan, you're proud of him, and you wish him nothing but the best. But I think the most important thing is he's still alive. He's breathing and, 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 and chasing a dream. That's right. And uh, I wish him nothing but the very best. I think it's a heck of a story and a tremendous story that one day will be covered the right way. Do we have any stories of... of you standing up for me behind the scenes that I don't know about or anything that's, that's occurred where maybe, uh, sorry to put you on the spot, but where you had to maybe set the record straight or something? Not just you. I'm fortunate with, with four kids and three boys uh, that played basketball growing up and played high school basketball. Um, and and I, I can remember I'm not a guy, as you know, I sit at, at the games and I don't say anything. I watched my dad, my mom was yelling, vocal, screaming, going crazy, but my dad was, 
either look at me, and this was the same thing. I went from a kid to an NBA player, a starting point guard on an NBA team, playing for the New York Knicks and Madison Square Garden, looking at my dad as I'm bringing the ball up the floor, and my dad would either go, or uh, didn't say nothing else. I knew exactly what he was. I knew exactly what he meant. Either continue it or make the adjustment. But I, I learned from him. So I sat. I sat at my kids' games and I didn't say anything. But there were times when I would have a moment with the coaches, not from a coach's standpoint, but just from a teaching standpoint. Um, whether it be in California, Indiana, New York, no matter where you guys were growing up and playing, if I thought something was wrong, not how you're playing my kid, but how you're, how you're conducting yourself. Not just, the, it could be somebody else's kid, maybe whatever it is. I'm gonna let my feelings be known in a respectful way and you can receive it or not. But I think it was important for me to, to say when things wasn't conducted in a proper way. I can remember the influence of the late, great Bobby Knight in Indiana. You was playing it. We was, I was playing with the Pacers and you was in Indiana. And everybody in Indiana that coached was influenced by Bobby Knight at the time. So every kid, every AAU program, every youth program, the coach is screaming and yelling and going crazy on the game. I'm like, what, what, what part of the game is that? But it was who influenced them and they were trying to be young Bobby Knights. So I would pull them aside and say, that, that's, that's, that's not how you're coaching my kid. I don't talk to my kid that way, and I'm not going to sit there and listen to you talk to my kid that way. It's disrespect, and it's not going to be tolerated. So I think there are times you pick and choose your battles, and you let your feelings be expressed, especially when you, you're seeing kids be affected. I remember my, my middle son, Jet, playing in, in, in high school and a coach, because guess what? If I'm a coach in today's high school, I'm going to try to please, especially where we live, I'm going to try to please the parents with deep pockets and, and, and thinking I can benefit somehow. So you're playing kids who don't deserve to be played and you're trying to appease the parents because on the back end, I can get taken care of. I'm working out little Johnny three times a week knowing that he doesn't have a future in basketball, but I'm getting $100 a, a, an hour to work him out and I'm benefiting and then I'm playing. I, Crooks. I don't mean little Johnny because Crooks. A, a little Johnny played on my son's team, so I'm not talking about <laughs> oh, yeah, you. Not little Johnny. Not, Johnny, not, cool, not, Johnny Cool, Johnny Cool, Johnny Cool. So it's just a name that happened to pop up. But... I had to have, sit down and have discussions with parents at times, just to, I mean, coaches at times, just to tell them how things should be done, coming from somebody that, not, not just, I'm not telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what, what I lived. I, I've experienced it. Important. And I think even, even more so, uh, speaking of your experience, is what you did when you came home and tried to instill in me, no matter what the coaches said, uh, know who you are. And you always told me that. And that's something that I think every parent, especially me now being a parent, I, I watch Noah and I'm like, yo, it's my job as a parent to guard his, uh, his mental space. And it's so many parents that put their child in another person's care when they're coaching them. And they leave them after school for hours, they leave them on the bus with the coach, and somebody ends up influencing you with your child even more than their own parents. And that's something that people don't talk about enough. Parenthood is, is so important, Dad. It's so important. In those times that nobody else sees, when you would speak to me and, and, and instill life into me and, and lift me up, those allowed me to go through seasons where it seemed like Bobby Knight coaches were, were prevailing or coaches or, or uh, trainers that would scream or, or try to pull you down. And, um, I don't know. Obviously, I feel like talking today, so I'm just uh, rambling. Dad, that's but, that's all right. You, you know, you the calls for a reason. Yeah, you, you, you was you didn't get you didn't raise your hand for this. I saw it <laughs> in you. So you go ahead and speak your mind and, and tell your truth because people don't just want to hear from my as aspect because there's a bunch of folks that didn't didn't live the way I lived. Uh, came through the same lane. There's a lot of folks that came through the lane and they're in the lane that you're in. So you can speak volumes to, through your experience to exactly where they are. I can see you definitely having a meeting with the coaches at, at oh, Noah's school. What? I, I can see you. What? I'm, I'm going to have, no, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to talk to you before you do that. Nah, nah, don't <laughs> talk to me. You don't talk to me a day before. <laughs> Just send me a text no, and pray for it. me. I can see it. Nah, man. This, even even Micah, even Yankee, man, my brother Yankee, he he dealt with that. As great of a basketball player as he as he as he was and is, if you allow people to tear you down. They'll make it seem like you don't got game. I can see I, I, you, you bringing it up. He was he was the best player on his high school team, and I can see him bring the ball up the floor, make a mistake, and the coach go down the bench and take somebody, 
call somebody to go get them. I'm like, what part of the game is that? I mean, w- w- you're, you're destroying your best player's confidence. I don't care who it is. This happens not just on a high school level or a bitty level or AU level. It happens in the pros. I'm watching guys make mistakes and get taken out of the game right away. No, how about give me a timeout? Oh, let me wait till a, another opportunity to discuss the mistakes that you made. Or let me wait till after the game. Sometimes it's, it's beneficial to me to see you get stripped or turn it over five times, and then it's a it's a it's a teaching session after the game or the next morning where I'm going to make you a better basketball player because we're going to break down the mistakes you made and I'm going to speak life to you and, and put you in a position where it only happens one time. So I think we, we, we've, we've neglected the opportunity to really pour into folks on, on all levels. And we're talking basketball, we're talking coaching, but this is in life in general. Yeah. You want to see a dead body? <laughs> What you got up your sleeve now, man? What's up with the Warriors, man? Why they get cooked by the Celtics like that? Fifty-two points. Wow. Fifty-two points. Yeah, it's, it was uh, it was a tough night. I, you know me; it don't matter to me. I'm not a fan of no team. I, yeah, I, no. I follow everybody, so it was a great game. I thought I'd watch on a Sunday afternoon, a Sunday evening. A great game, two of the best. Boston came with a whole different mentality to deliver a message. Um, still thinking about what took place in the NBA Finals when they lost to the Warriors. And they had a point to be made, and they made it emphatically. Um, and it started right away. So it was absolutely a tremendous performance and a beatdown. Uh, one thing I didn't, I was, I was shocked the way that the game plan was to basically dare Jalen Brown to uh, shoot the basketball. And they didn't even defend him at the three-point line. I think... I was shocked because if you defended me that way, I understand. I'm not a natural scorer. I'm not a natural shooter. And you're daring me to do something that's uncomfortable to me, to take 10, 20 shots. Jalen Brown is the second best player on the Boston Celtics, and he's a legit, legit scorer. So to dare him to start the ball game allowed him to gain confidence, momentum, and to take it personal and to play with an edge. He put on it. He set the tone for them, and everything else from there on was downhill. What I liked also is, you know, you've been a, if if you've taken 10 shots and we started the game and I'm Jason Tatum or the other guy, I'm like, yo, this dude just jacking up shots. That wasn't the mentality of the Boston Celtics. They understood the way that he was being defended. They got him the basketball, and he set the tone, and then other guys were able to get involved. But it was a statement made by the Boston Celtics the other day. Now, I know Steph was under the weather. I know there was a few players out for the Warriors. But how serious is a loss of this magnitude in the midst of a season? I will say this. I'm not talking about under the weather and all that because everybody's got a nicked up injury or everybody's not feeling 100%. I always believe if you're on the court, you're 100%. I'm not going to give you the benefit of the doubt or no excuse for not being as healthy as possible. Steph Curry suited up and they lost. And I like what he said after. We lost. We got a beat down. What was your question? How big of a deal is, oh, is a loss of that magnitude? 52 it's, it's, points. It's, it's a big deal. You lose by 52, it's a big deal. But I will say this. There's also, as a guy that played 17 years and coached three years, there's also a benefit to it. Sometimes I've been a part of teams as a player, as a coach, and I've witnessed as a fan. Sometimes you can win 10 straight games, and now we're in practice. I can remember I was playing for the Indiana Pacers, and we were rolling, and we had a – uh, we was playing the San Antonio Spurs, and it was 70s night. So we on the layup line, and some brilliant idea comes up. We're going to wear afros on the layup line. So we got on wigs. We got afros. We on the layup line, finger rolling. We done won like eight, nine, ten straight games. We doing dips. We doing old school back end moves, fadeaway jump shots, clowning. Man, we got drilled by the San Antonio <laughs> Spurs. <laughs> like, what a, but you can, you can think – that it's something that is not. You're winning because of the way you're playing, the way you're defending, the way you're executing, the way you're taking care of the basketball, the way you come out at the jump ball and play with crazy energy, effort, and competitive spirit. You're not winning for the, all, all the other nonsense. So sometimes a loss or getting a beat down is beneficial from a coach's standpoint because it allows me to deliver a message and you hear it more clearer than you heard it 
Because you could be like, Coach just tripping. He's talking about we going, you know, we doing this, and we don't win 10 straight games. You think you God's gift to the game. But when you get a beat down, it makes it easier for me to show film, to say what we need to work on, and to also say, I told you so. See, what I was saying all, all along, I wasn't bickering. I was just trying to coach, and it allows you to coach. But it was, it was a, it, it, and conversely, it makes it tougher from the standpoint of Joe Missoula. What am I going to come and say on the film tomorrow? We, we just beat the Golden State Warriors by 52. They're going to be like, oh, you just nitpicking. No, no. Sometimes you got to come and say, we did it. But, but in order to sustain it, let me show you what we did right, yeah. and let's continue to build. Because yeah. the, our objective isn't to beat the Golden State Warriors on a Sunday afternoon in our home arena. Our objective is at the end of the day, be wearing the jewelry. This is how you going to be wearing them at the end of the day, by continuing to develop and sustain the proper habits. And I think that's what the Warriors will do, the championship DNA that they have. I think they'll take a loss like this and be able to um, juxtapose themselves and switch it around and um, be able to have a positive outlook for the rest of the season. It was interesting, too, that Steve Kerr decided at halftime to, you know, he threw in the flag, for lack of a better term, by not playing Steph Curry, Jim Green, Clay Thompson, uh, Kaminga. They didn't start the second half and they didn't play. But I, I think that was the right decision because – you know, they've been, they've been playing the foot on the gas pedal, good opportunity to let them take the second half off and then regroups. You're, gonna, you're, not, you're, not, you're not winning that game. Not, somebody over in Tupelo, Mississippi sitting there, you quit on it. No, you're not winning that game. It's over. And it's okay to say it's over. See, this is where it's funny. You, you were St. John's, Rookie of the Year, NBA 17 years. I was the dude on the bench waiting for the blowout to happen so I could get in. I'm like, yo, this is a 52-point game. That's when I come in and get buckets. <laughs> See, your problem, here's your, here's your, you're right, here's your problem. Here's your problem. You're not thinking, I can go in here and play. You're thinking, I'm, I'm going to get buckets. No, nah, we, we down by 52. <laughs> <laughs> the starting PG is in trouble. This is my chance. <laughs> I can see you now. Are you trying to get 52? Oh, no, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to come back. I'm trying to make a comeback and make a statement like, yo, this is, this is what I do. And there's people like you. Here's the problem. <laughs> no, no, because here's the problem. I can see it now. And after the game, you're like, we lost by 40, but I had 30. Nah, like, nah, no, 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 no. I, I lived with you. No, nah, no. Nah. You don't say it like that. You got to smooth it. You got to, you got to, we lost by 40, but, um. You know, I put in a lot of effort, and it was. Like, <laughs> that's, not, that's that's not what you're gonna say. Then you ask, like, what 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 you you played hard? I'm like, yeah, you know, I had 30, but it wasn't enough. That's how you, right? No, that's not true. That's <laughs> you're gonna be smiling. I'm gonna be like, what are you smiling about? We got drilled. Nah, lost my right, 30. Right. Lost my 40. What are you smiling? I balled there. <laughs> <laughs> in other news, man, the Suns lost to the Thunder. Nurk had 31 rebounds. How big of a deal is that in today's game? I tell you, Yusef Nurkic getting 31 rebounds, that's a big deal. 31 rebounds is 31 rebounds. It's like 40 points and 50 points and 70 points and 70 points. You don't stumble onto getting 31 rebounds. He outworked everybody on the floor. He won his matchup. He took advantage and made his presence felt. So it's a big deal. Uh, what I will say is it's easy to get rebounds today because the volume shooting has gone up so much. And, and, and – the long rebounds. And also, if you think about it, other than Chet Holgram, Oklahoma City Thunder, they really don't play another big. So he dominated his position. To me, if I'm coaching the Phoenix Suns, I challenge him, don't tease me, because now you show me what you're capable of doing. Now I want you to be able to do it moving forward, no matter who we're facing. Be dominant on the boards and have that same tenacity. I'm going to hold you accountable to it. So I think, it's a, again, it's an opportunity to challenge and, and, and demand him do that on a nightly basis. No reason for you to have 31 tonight and six tomorrow. Something ain't right. If he's playing like that, the Suns, the Suns are going to be hard to beat. I don't believe so because I don't think as a team they get after it on a defensive end. Mm. And that don't mean you got to shut people down, but I don't like the edge in which they don't play with defensively. Offensively, you got special talent. You got special abilities, especially three, three guys – and Durant, and Booker, and Beal that can go get theirs and also create offense. They got some good role players, but I like to have them uh, play with a better edge uh, on the defensive end, setting the tone and not relying on winning a game or a playoff series on the offensive end. They have all the tools, but I'm not sure I'd pick them 
as a favorite in the Western Conference. I trust other guys, other teams more defensively um, than relying on them offensively. To spin off that, shouts out to Shaq. Is Bo Bo better than Wimby? Man, watch your mouth. What? <laughs> what, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? What? What are we doing? What? That's an all-time legend. You just going to disregard say- his statement? He, he said He didn't Bobo. say that. He what didn't you say mean? Shaq didn't say he that. Said Bobo, <laughs> he, he, exactly. he said Bobo, if he, what I forget exactly. He said if he was in the right situation, he, he could be as good as Wimby. No. And Bobo, I love. Bobo got game, got man. It. That's, not, that's not the argument. That's not what you said. We can, we can shake hands and agree to that. Yes. And he, and he has a bright future and he's loaded with talent and he can impact games today, give an opportunity and let him, again, what we talked about, let him play through his mistakes. He has size, skills, can handle the basketball, can shoot the basketball, can be disruptive on the defensive end. No argument here. Wimby is a is a generational talent. Yes. Wimby will be the face of the NBA. Amen. Bobo won't be involved in that. It's two different discussions. Let me prophesy. Amen. Tito, Bobo Randy, Jermaine. Bobo is on the way. Tito, Randy, Jermaine, Jackie. They were in the Jackson Five. Michael was different. I mean, what, so what do you Bobo, want? So can Bobo dance can, in the background? He can, can he do I, some stuff? Yeah. Got no, no, no doubt about it. He Just can, let him he, in he the can game. Do the two man. step. To, yes. You telling me when you see him, he's not doing Wimby type things, KD type things. He has the ability. He will not be the face of the NBA. No, no, no. Okay, I so that's what we're that. talking about. When I you say the guy, that. you said Shaq said he's better or as good. No, he's he's in the same lane. No, he's not in the same lane. Yeah, you're right. When, <laughs> two, two guys that's over seven feet tall that's skilled and can play. Yes, they're in the same lane. Man, that dude got game, man. I, I just wanted to shout out Bobo, man. That dude got game. Okay. I, when I see him. He, Going through the lane with the one hand with the... Your eyes are like my eyes. See how they're both eyes. One's, one's green and <laughs> no, one's brown. No it's, like, no, it's the same thing. We both have a set of eyes. It makes no sense. Goodness, man. It makes no sense. Let's, let's, let's move forward. I don't know if you know, it's Women's History Month. Shout out to all the women. Absolutely. And, 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 and a special shout out to one, Caitlin Clark. Game. Who, who historically made history in an emphatic way, broke the all-time major college scoring record held by the late, great Pistol Pete Maverick. She broke the record. What do you say to that? I mean, you played in Manhattan, you played in Louisville, you were a college player, a successful one. Think about the history that was made. It's legendary, man. When you look at how far women's sports has come and just the respect level that they've garnered to this point, it's unbelievable. These women are playing definitely, maybe not the athleticism that the men have, but IQ-wise and just pure skill, the gap has closed like never before. So when I see Caitlin doing these type of things, I'm looking at it like, please don't come to the LA Fitness around me because I'm not trying to get <laughs> cooked by a woman, please. Please. She is tough, man. She's got it all. And the skill level, what you talked about, the shooting ability, the skill level, the toughness, the embracing of the bright lights, it's absolutely incredible. She knew all the... Pre- Think about all the people that showed up to watch her shatter the record. Women's basketball is on the rise, and deservedly so. So special shout-out from the Mark Jackson Show to Women's History Month, and special shout-out to Caitlin Clark and the history that you not only made but continues to make. And I don't know if you know, you born and raised... You born in Indiana. She's she, Indiana has a number one pick. Who was so, born in Indiana? Oh, you wasn't born in Indiana. He talking about my brother. Your brother was born there. Right? <laughs> That's what happened when you got a bunch. I, Jet. Yeah, Jet, Jet was born, was born in Indiana. Indiana. But you, you, you spent a lot of time in Indiana. They got the number one pick, so she will be a member of the Indiana team. Special shout out. I see Reggie Miller already shouting out. No one, dude. You're not the GM. Mind your business, man. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> what you mean? No, mind your business. Why you're you got to mind his business? No, no, no. Mind your business. Stay nah, in LA. man. That's like telling. The, the greatest doctor in the world not to comment on another doctor. That dude is a shooter, man. He can comment on any shooter that ever comes on this planet. Anybody that dribbles a ball, he can so talk about So then I can. Relax. I beat him in a Relax. shootout. Relax. You talk about the dimes. I beat him in a shootout. Who? All the great shooters that I played with. I don't know why everybody keep letting you get away with talking this crazy. It's Please, documented. Reggie, come catch him today. It's, it's documented. You can, you can outshoot him today. Catch him. It's documented. He's coming for you. Who's don't the greatest worry. shooter that's ever lived? Steph Curry. Hello? What? Hold on, what? I know it's a trap question. No, we Go had a shooting I know shooter. you want to say it. Go we ahead. had a shooting Come on, contest. tell the story. And what no, happened? No, no. And what happened? On another, on another episode of <laughs> Mark Jackson show, we will, we, will, we will show you some of the footage. Oh, my goodness, man. You love that story. But, but historic, 
run by Caitlin Clark. Shout yes. out to her. Yes. So we're real close to answering a lot of y'all questions. Keep them coming in the comment section. We're going to get to them. But for a second, we're going to go to some photos, man, because these pictures today. We see you right here with the legend, Nipsey Hussle, man. This is taken. Where was this? This was a Laker that, game? Well, it was a Staples Center at the time. It's a Laker game. Man, legend. Taken too early, man. Shout out to Nipsey. Absolutely. What was the, what were y'all talking about? Just chopping it up. Respect for one another, for one another's accomplishments, for one another's uh, stance as, as men and impact uh, for the culture. And he showed a lot of respect. It was my first time meeting him. Obviously knew who he was. And you get shocked. Like, you, you think, okay, you go and you introduce yourself and automatically go, man, I know who you are. You know, you start running down your resume. He does and knows it as well as I know his. But like you talked about, legend gone too soon. Uh, loved the impact that he had on, on the culture and on his, on his neighborhood. And um, just unfortunate. Special shout out to his family and loved ones. Absolutely. But this was a, a great moment in time. And I'm so fortunate that the picture was taken. You, you have these moments where you man, I wish I would have taken a picture. Fortunately, incredible camera people for the NBA took the picture. Shout out Andy Bernstein and uh, delivered the picture to me via email. So it's something I, that I really, really treasure and cherish. Hustle in the house. You're not this the only one. Legendary picture, man. Yeah. You're not the only one that could do picture time. Huh? I'm just saying. If you can hide, you can hear. No, no, no. I'm, no. I'm, I'm still looking at this other picture. Hold on. What picture are you looking at? I'm looking at the other one. Is this, is this Dana in the back of this picture? This is Dana Pump. Yes, it is. That is hilarious. I did not. What is he doing in the background? Ear hustling. <laughs> Shouts out to Dana, man. That's double pump Adidas. Played played AAU under him. That's hilarious. What is he in this picture for, man? Hold Anyways, on. you so you one of those people? What you mean? <clears throat> I got a I got a family full of those people that basically play investigator. With, the, the picture is me and Nipsey. Why are you looking at the background and who's in the background? I I, I never knew that. Until you pointed out. So you breaking down the picture. You needed to have that mentality when it came to game film. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Why didn't you break down that the rotation was wrong and I should have been there? You didn't see that, but you see the pump brother in the background. It's my baby mama rubbing off on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You ain't... And we move on. You, <laughs> yeah, don't give me a you, 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 you ain't the, uh, the only one that can play picture moment. I, I got a picture I want to show you and get your input as far as it's concerned. Yeah. What, what, what we see here? Let me take over this. What, what we see in this picture right oh, now? Oh, this is heat. Hold on. This two legends right here. This the legend. This this bow. Shad Moss, man. This is a big picture. That's a great picture. Two young. Where was this talented, at? I think this was an all-star game. Man, that's crazy, man. I like the crawl, the chain you got yeah, you on. See yeah, you see that chain? I've been was, representing you, Yeah, you was doing it big. Don't get it twisted. I've but been. you and Bow Wow, did, in this picture, are you aware of, of Bow Wow and his greatness and how big of a celebrity he was? And yeah. Impact? Yeah. At this time, I remember this now vaguely. I, I, at that time, I was looking at little Bow Wow like, man, this dude is, is huge. But honestly, I was still looking at it like this is a kid. But I'm like, this is... This is, this is a big dude, bro. This is a, a legend. I don't even know what else to say about this. I need to keep this picture and snapshot it. You got a lot of great pictures. This is not the last time I'm going to go into my arsenal as far as pictures are concerned. That is hilarious, Just man. Just letting you know. Who, who would have won a one-on-one -on -one matchup? Don't do that. Don't do that. He played ball. He, he's a good ball player. Are we filming like Mike or is it real life? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're right. Memories, man. Memories. Right. But anyways, let's thank Underdog Fantasy. Click the link in the description below. Use the promo code MARK. That's M-A-R-K. And they are matching up to $100. Go click it right now. That's Blue. And he's trying to get his own show. Special shout out to my guys, Cam and Mace. Make it happen. He's made this happen. Continue to watch us on the Mark Jackson Show on the Come and Talk to Me Network. Nothing but love and respect. Blessings.